In this example, what we're trying to do is to determine the resistance of some square bar. And so we're told that this bar has four meter length and it has a uniform cross section as we see below in this picture. So we see we started with this three by three square of, of lead. So that's our, our PB and we've bored a hole in it of one centimeter diameter and we filled that hole with copper, so Cu. And so now what we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out the resistance of this composite material that makes up this four meter length bar. Uh, so I've copied over here our conductivities for these two materials. Uh, so these are from Appendix B in the textbook. Uh, so our conductivity of lead is going to be five times 10 to the six Siemens per meter. And our conductivity of copper is going to be 5.8 times 10 to the seventh Siemens per meter. So what we need to do is we're gonna find the conductivity of these two segments. So we can sort of think of it as two different paths, right? So let's start by looking at our copper segment. So for our copper segment, of course we have R is equal to L over our conductivity. So sigma times S. So S is our cross-sectional area. So in this case, our S is going to be pi R squared. So pi, and again, we're gonna to wanna to put everything into meters. So our radius is going to be that diameter of 0.01 meters divided by two, and we square that to get our area. And so that ends up being 2.5 times 10 to the minus fifth times pi meters squared. All right, and then of course our L is going to be the four meters. So we can say that the resistance of our copper path is going to be four, so that's our four meters, divided by our 5.8 times 10 to the seventh Siemens per meter times our 2.5 times 10 to the minus fifth pi meters squared, so that's our cross-sectional area, and we get that that is approximately 878.10 microohms. So notice that's a very small resistance, and that's what we would expect because, of course, copper is a very conductive material. So next, let's look at our lead segment. So for our lead segment, again, we're using that same basic equation because we do have a uniform cross-section. Uh, we're gonna come back later and see how we deal with it when it's not quite so easy. Um, but for now, we have this uniform cross-section. So again, we need to figure out what our S is. So our S for the lead is going to be this three by three square, but then we have to subtract that circle area in the middle. So for our square, again, we want this in meters. So we have 0.03 meters times 0.03 meters. So this distance or this area rather is going to be our square, but then we need to subtract the circle and we found above our circle area is 2.5 times 10 to the minus fifth times pi and that's meters squared as well. So square minus the circle gives us our overall cross-sectional area of the lead region which ends up being about 8.215 times 10 to the minus fourth meters squared. So now we just plug into that general equation for R. So we can say that the resistance of our lead region is going to be approximately equal to, so again, the length of four in the numerator, our conductivity of lead is five times 10 to the six Siemens per meter. Our cross-sectional area is 8.215 times 10 to the minus fourth meters squared. Plugging that in, we get about 973.88 microohms. So again, a very small resistance, which is to be expected because of course this is again a metal. Okay, but remember we wanted the overall resistance of this square bar. So how do we, how do we get that from these, the resistances of these two separate segments? And so if we think about it, uh, we can think about these two as sort of alternate paths, right? So if we think about it from the, the sort of uh, the perspective of an electron, uh, if we're going from one end to the other, we see two paths. We can either sort of stay towards the outside and be going through the lead, or we can be going through that inner circle and going through the copper. And so because those two paths have the same starting point and the same ending point, we can say that they're in parallel. So all we're going to do here is treat these like two parallel resistors. So we can say that the overall resistance of our bar, 
R sub BAR is equal to the resistance of the copper segment in parallel with the resistance of our lead segment. And if we plug that in, we see that this is approximately 461.75 microohms. And so again, very low resistance because these are metals which have very good conductivity, uh, so as we would expect.